better run, man. Life's a pain, but you got me. Yeah, life's a pain, but I got you. Hey, what's up, Parasites? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Blog. And today I have my friend Venom Unleashed, aka Venom Balor, who has returned, and he's gonna talk to us with uh, we're gonna talk about Savage Avengers, which is a series that came out recently. They only did 10 issues. And this was something you really wanted to talk about. And when I heard you were so excited about the series, I was like, all right, dude, let's just do it as another joint episode where we both kind of bounce off our ideas and our thoughts on this. So, you know, say hello to the parasites again, dude. And, uh, and, you know, and, and introduce yourself. Tell us where we can find you online as well. Hey, what's up everybody. Uh, Venom Unleashed, Venom Balor. Um, only social I have is Twitter. So it's uh, at Venom Balor. So that's it. So he, yeah, and I'll put a link to that down below, you guys, if you want to follow him on there. Um, and we're excited. We just got some news, breaking news right before this started recording. Uh, so we'll talk about that real quick. Uh, you and I, I think it's literally just for you and I, we're getting a Chasm and Kane miniseries coming out. Uh, talk about prayers being answered. <laughs> yes. I remember um, it was either the last video we did or the one before. It might have been the one before. Uh -huh. I had told you about Kane coming back. Like, it yes. was a big surprise. Yeah. And and, I, uh, oh, my God. And that book was hard to get because of Spider-Boy. I didn't give a crap about Spider-Boy. I wanted to see Kane. Um, yeah, that's that's true, man. Like, yeah, you were you you were saying how that Spider-Man had showed up. You were like, hey, pick up Spider-Man number six or seven. Kane is back. And I went everywhere looking for that book. And everyone's like, nah, man, we're sold out. And I'm like, why? Because of Kane? And they're like, no, Spider-Boy's first appearance. I'm like. Who's Spider Boy? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah. yeah, Devin Lewis or whoever over, you know, whoever's editing the Spider Man books or whoever's over there. I don't know how you hear heard our prayers, but thank you because uh, we will okay. definitely we'll do another one of these episodes, me and you, because obviously I followed the journey of Kane and Ben here on the show, and uh, because you know Ben is tied to Venom in a way too. He was the first Spider Man to actually beat Venom in hand to hand yeah. combat. And so we covered him on the show a couple times and we got to do his whole comic history and we're completely caught up now that we've done the you know dark web story that came out recently. So yeah, for sure. And Ben is currently in a, he's appearing in a Marvel book right now, an X-Men book uh, of some kind uh, that you can pick him up in. And we'll talk a little bit about that appearance and the chasm and Kane story coming out later. But yeah, we just wanted to drop that information that uh, that was really cool. The night we're recording, <laughs> we got inf they've yes. got a story that's coming out. That's I feel like is literally just for you and me uh, and other uh, people like us. Uh, so exciting, man. So <laughs> exciting. Cause it, it has been so long, so long. And these two finally got face to face again. How long has it been, man? It has been a long time. Yeah, well, they they were side by side in Peter David's Scarlet Spider run, you know. But yes. that was that was like six or seven years ago, maybe. Dude, um, that, that was like 2017, maybe. Yeah, so that's <laughs> exactly. So it's been a while. Yeah. Um, but that's really cool. And then to, on today's episode, though, we were going to talk about another favorite of ours, uh, you and I, Flash Thompson. Um, yeah. This series of Savage Avengers, it's written by David Popose. Uh, and I think that's how you pronounce his last name. And I'm sorry if I mispronounce it. I did some research trying to find out, and I couldn't. I couldn't do anything to like, you know, where you go to Google and say, how do you say this word? And it reads it to you. Uh, it was saying propose. And I was like, eh, I feel like it could be propose. I don't know. So David, um, very talented guy. I've been seeing his name on a lot of books at Marvel lately, including Moon Knight City of the Dead. Um, and then we also have Carlos Magno, who's done the artwork. And the artwork on this book is phenomenal. And I got to give you credit because I read the first trade when this came out. And I kind of liked it. I was like, all right, this is cool. It's the Conan story. You know, Marvel just trying to do stuff with Conan, but I was like, yeah, I, I feel like it's, it's not really hooking me. And you were like, dude, you got to go back. You got to finish it. Uh, and when I read that second volume in 2099, I, man, that book really, they talk about sticking a landing. That was a lot of fun. So we'll go through yeah. that, but real briefly, like, tell me how, why, like, cause you got me to do this episode I, I, in a lot of ways. So what was so awesome about this book? Just real briefly, cause we're going to dive deeper in that made you go seek. You got to do it. You got to talk about it. Well, first of all, the only reason that I went for it was because of flash. Yeah. Uh, you know, because we had just seen him in, what was it? The extreme carnage series. Yeah. Yep. And, um, you know, there was nothing else going on. And then, uh, my LCS, uh, my, the, the owner of the shop owner, he was like, Hey, do you, do you want me to put this in your, in your pull list? 
And I was like, what, what is it? And he told me, and, he's, and I was like, I don't know if I'd be interested. He said, well, Flash is in it. I was like, Flash as yeah. Agent anti -Venom? He's like, yes. I was like, yeah, yeah. 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 Add, it, add it right now, two copies, just in case. <laughs> so, as a matter of fact, I got like every cover that they uh. made of each of each issue <laughs> i love when a series does that like i'm not a big variant guy but sometimes i'll read a series and i'm like this is so good and the variants are so good that i'm just going to support the book and buy multiple copies um what uh yeah. what really hooked me in on the first yeah. issue uh -huh. is the cover you see anti-venom all monstered out yeah okay flash has never looked like that before He's always True. just been agent anti venom. I right. seen that and I was like, "Whoa!" <laughs> yeah, it was cool because an image of Flash losing control, which was the case when he was a agent Venom, and he would like, you know, hold or Venom out and kind of look like Venom Venom, um, and that was like a sign that he was losing control. So yeah, to see him do that where he looked like the original anti venom with the spikes on his shoulders and the long jaw and the big hands. And I was like, Oh dude, this is wild. Um, yeah, yeah you're right. The imagery alone of that, uh, with him and like Conan holding a sword and Electra, who's the new daredevil in this series. Like there's a lot of cool stuff in this book. And so let's dive right into it, man. Cause the opening, if you are a flash Thompson fan, this book literally opens with flash Thompson it's it starts yep. with him he gets a call from liz allen who's like hey someone's been stealing tech from you know a bunch of corporations in new york and they've been hitting alchemex buildings could you investigate you know now i've heard you're back from the dead or whatever so do you mind doing this and he's like sure and he he comes in to a part of alchemex at uh, one of their offices is near hell's kitchen so who does he you know call on his old partner from the thunderbolts electra who's now daredevil so the book starts with daredevil and flash kind of investigating you know almost like uh, detective style uh trying to look for clues so yeah man what do you think of that opening because uh, yeah as a fan i know it sounds simple it's like just people standing and talking and looking at stuff but it sets the tone it pulls you in it's i thought it was awesome well i mean as soon it, as soon as it starts you see you see anti-venom agent anti-venom right there he's like <laughs> in it right at the beginning i'm like yes let's go <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, they they do. I mean, uh, they they really put them front and center, right on the front, you know, right on the first page, and you're like, oh my goodness, yes, this is what I'm yes. here for. Um, because yes. I know they have like a little bit of an intro with Conan, obviously, um, and then with like the the Snake Men and the Mad Bomb and stuff, and I think that gets the big splash page. But that's kind of going on to set up one story, and I'm going to need your help because actually, the, a couple criticisms I have of this book. I'll get into, but you may be able to help me fill in because I read this recently and took some notes, but m my head's still fuzzy on some of the answers that I thought we got in the book. And so I may, I may have read it wrong. Um, so I might need your help, but um, in the first volume, like, you know, you have this amazing art, you have this great story starting off with flash and, and daredevil, AKA Electra. You got Conan fighting the uh, snake man who is trying to stop uh, Thula doom is kind of like one of their leaders and he they're trying to stop him from resurrecting set i believe yes, um yeah. the egyptian god yeah right so um so that's really neat so so tell me kind of in your words like how that sets up the story and then some of the team members besides the ones we just talked about joining the team well i mean pretty much uh flash and electra's doing their thing um you've got um oh my gosh i always forget his name, Weapon H. Um, yes, yeah, Weapon H. First name starts, his first name starts with a C. Uh, I can't remember right off. But anyway, he himself, he is just, uh, he was like getting some food or something. Like yeah. just minding his own business. He wasn't doing like no superhero stuff. Right. He was just, like, he was carrying out bags of food. And so you got that going on. And then you've got Black Knight, mm -hmm. uh, Dane Whitman. Dane, he's, yep. actually, he's actually in a diner eating. Yeah. Uh, I think he's at a so, bar drinking. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, well, yeah. Um, <laughs> so you got, you got that going on and then these thugs come up and they're wanting to rob, uh, is it Clint? It, 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 Clay. 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 That's it. You're right. I think it's Clay. Yeah. Clay. They're wanting to rob him, man. He's like, uh, "Are you sure you want to do this?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's like, "He's like, please don't rob me today. I'm not in the mood." Yeah. Right. He's just, he's, just, he's just wanting to go home, and yeah, and they're like, "You, they're wanting to rob him," and he's like, "Oh well, oh well." 
Oh, yeah, so. <laughs> you, you asked for it. <laughs> yeah. So he's there trying to just pretty much protect himself like they're going to do anything to him anyway. But And then that's when uh, uh, Black Knight, he sees what's going on. He rushes out there and he thinks, you know, Weapon H is you know, causing trouble and shit. And, right. You know, He's only getting mugged. Case, <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. So, but that's how they, they end up together like that. Right. Uh, and then you got the stuff going on with Conan and the, and mm-hmm. the snake man. Right. Um, something, something happens to where there's like some kind of spell or something. And it also, um, who is it? Uh, Cloak and Dagger. Well, yeah. They, Cloak and Dagger show. Something's going on with them. I can't remember exactly what it was, but, some kind of spell is done with where Conan is. Yes, right. And it's it a affects, mad bomb. I think it's called a mad bomb. And it affects Cloak. Yes. And it's like it draws him in, and with him, it's like they pull in all of the uh, Savage Avengers. They right. it pulls them all in, and they go into where Conan is in his universe. They pull him him in there. And right. then it goes from there. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's really, it, it's funny because it sounds rushed in a way. It's like, it's, you know, we talked about this before and stuff, how writing comics is very hard and, and writing a first issue is very difficult, um, especially when you're doing a team book because you want to give enough to where you get a sense of the characters. You want to find a way to unite all the characters before the end of the first issue so you can see the t- team start to build. You want to set up the threat as well. And I got to say this first issue does a pretty good job at that because and they use Cloak. It's like, all right, well, why is Cloak and Dagger on the team? Well, he's vital because he reacts, like you said, to this mad bomb going off. And it helps him become like a, um, almost like a, a vacuum in a way where he pulls in the desired team members that are going to end up being, that are destined to fight this battle. And they're not just fighting a battle like in present day. They get sucked through time, uh, both in the past and like you said, Conan's Sumerian world. And then also in the future, as we'll get into the second volume. So Cloak turns out to be a big part of it. And actually, they do a lot with Dagger in this book, too. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they, they, I think David, he balanced a lot of characters well. Like, I, there's, I, I, like I said, I'm going to have some criticisms on some of this because I didn't really like the Flash Thompson Dagger flirtation thing. I didn't really, get, I didn't really care for that. But, but otherwise, like the, the book, I think, does a good job pulling everybody in. Um, and yeah, and, then, and, and they actually set up a threat. So you think, okay, it's Thula Doom. They're going to stop set. You know, this mad bomb goes off and it's, ha- you know, the town of or you know New York or whatever is affected. A couple blocks worth are affected, but the team doesn't get to stay and fight that. They get sucked back in time because a enemy shows up that is a time traveler. So tell us a little bit about our new version of uh, this classic Marvel character that shows up. As the team is on their way to where he is, mm-hmm. Death- Deathlock shows up. Yeah. And accuses him of breaking the the time stream, and is threatening to erase him from existence. Right. Um, and he is like dead set on it. Like, yeah, you know, this death lock wants only, to, yeah, he the, wants to kill Conan. All, it's the <laughs> only thing he cares about. It's the only thing he talks about. And then when the rest of the team show up, it's just a big giant battle, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Everybody versus De- Deathlock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it pretty um, much is. Yeah, yeah, and he, he, he who, yeah, he holds his own. But there's something that will, um, that you'll find out later on. That's that really surprised me when I found out about it. I was like, mm-hmm. whoa, man. Yeah, well, yeah, and we'll get into that because that kind of they they reveal that a little bit. Towards the end of this first volume, I believe. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, we'll get into that about who Deathlock is, or you know, because there's been Michael. There's been a couple different versions of Deathlock over the years, and so uh, and obviously, if you've read anything by um, Rick Remender, if uh, it, it's kind of like if you read his run with Uncanny X Force, there was some Deathlocks in there, but this one's a little different. And, and like you said, we'll get into that. But having a bunch of Avengers, essentially, these are Savage Avengers fighting one villain feels very Avengers to me because like. You know, you have like the X-Men and they fight bad guys with henchmen sometimes. And sometimes the Avengers do on occasion. But when I think of Avengers, they think of Ultron and uh, Kang. And, you know, and I think of some of their bigger villains, uh, Thanos and stuff, when some stories have them have henchmen or, you know, fodder. But mostly it's just 
a team versus one person. And that's what this book is, is once Thula Doom becomes a footnote after he, he gets pretty taken out uh, early on. And then it's just the team bouncing through time, fighting Deathlock in different past scenarios, including one past that they go to from ancient Samaria to like a, a medieval kind of setting. And they actually run into Devil Dinosaur, <laughs> which is hey, so man, cool. I, I thought that was great, man. I, I loved it. Great. Yeah, yeah, that's like a Devil Dinosaur way in the past before it moved to the present and, and met the little girl that, you know, a moon girl. Um, yeah. So just really cool. Like, I thought that was awesome. Great cameo. Uh, yes. And and it's real. I mean, he shows up actually several times. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. Because uh, he's trying to kill them. He's trying to eat them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, but it's great. I, 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 I first time I seen that, I, I love that. That was great. I was like, yeah, man. <laughs> That's the thing is this this book has like, for David is really good at balancing like, okay, the the the, the stakes are high. It's serious. And then you get this ragtag group of people who some get along, some don't, some know each other, some are meeting for the first time. And then, um, and then, but also have being a little like whimsical and like humorous with it, kind of like a Marvel movie is sometimes. Um, yeah. but, but the jokes actually kind of land a little bit, um, yeah. which is great. Like, uh, I think that adds a lot to the book. And yeah, when you see Devil Dinosaur, anyone would be like, oh, that's just like a dumb gimmick to get a cameo in there. And there's a lot of cameos in here. And some of them feel like they could be gimmicks, but when you when someone writes it well, it doesn't feel as gimmicky. It feels like, oh, this is just fun. Like this is a fun part of the story. Man, there's one, there's one cameo. Well, okay. it's a little more than a cameo that comes, yeah. that comes later that I absolutely marked out about. Oh, oh yeah. Oh there's a couple. Oh. Well, so tell us because as you know, Deathlock is he gets at one point he gets his arm chopped off and he's fighting with one arm and he's fighting the team. He's getting the upper hand on them. They're losing. And then finally, at one point, I think Conan gets his sword back and he's like, okay, I got my weapon. I, you know, we got the team and Electra goes or daredevil. She's like, I have a plan. Um, I don't know this land as well as you might. So you got to help me figure this is the setting we need. And this is the plan we're going to do. And, uh, and I like that. Cause then it just cuts right to, Deathlock showing up with like a, a super gun, one arm, ready to fight this battle, and uh, and boy oh boy does he get his clock cleaned. Uh, mm -hmm. they, they all come down on that guy. So, um, but during this, like, uh, first of all, tell me what you thought of that that slugfest, and then I want to set up the cutaway we get to where we go into a future where we see the the identity of Deathlock. Uh, so, yeah, what what do you think of that battle though, where they all kind of cornered him in that those ruins, and they kind of all took turns beating away at him, including Flash, who goes ballistic on him. Oh, man. I thought it was great. Dude, I mean, th it, this was like, it's like night and day, like, compared to, like, uh, Dark Web. <laughs> yes, uh, yeah, exactly, oh, right. It's dude, like a fun crossover. Dude, like, <laughs> like it, it all hits. Like, yeah. it, it is, I mean, it's it, it's great. It's great. I loved it. Absolutely. Yeah, talk you talk about like, cause we talked about that in dark web where we were dissecting like, okay, the dialogue wasn't great. So when the dialogue's great, not great. Okay. Maybe at least the artwork and the fighting will be good. And there were some good art artists on, on uh, that book. No, no doubt about it. Like Ed McGinnis and, you know, John Romita Jr. Like I like those guys. Um, but um, Sandoval dude. Yeah. And Sandoval. Oh, yeah, exactly. Man. Right. Yeah. So man. had some great artists on those, those dark web books, but the fighting didn't feel good good a lot of times it, and some of it felt rushed and some of those big moments you wanted to see like in a crossover where it's like okay you have these are my characters that they're using i want each of them to get a big moment in this book they go out of their way to give each character a moment or two uh and they balance it really really well yeah they they don't like they don't short anybody man it I, and, no. and it you would like look at it and, and feel like maybe it seemed kind of rushed but it wasn't it it, it fit it, I mean, I, I, I thought it was perfect, dude. Yeah. Um, I like you know, the, the, the fighting. Oh, yeah. They, they, they did, they did so great on that. And they absolutely kicked Deathlock's ass. <laughs> yeah, they do. Yeah. Cause this book is like, you know, you get that good dialogue, you get that good story, you get that good setup. And that way you, you build that for like a good 10 pages where you're like, okay, where's this going? What's going to happen? And then just like eight pages of just 
bam, bam, bam. And you're like, yeah. okay, all right, this is awesome. And the the camera angles, the like, you know, I call them that, but the just the different drawing angles and everything that Carlos put together and how they, you know, every fight, every punch connects, how like the teeth of Venom biting in, like everything is just done so well. Even Weapon H, who I'm not even a big fan of. So to bring him in, this is one of those characters where I think, you know, you get a book like this and you go, all right, Who's not being used a lot right now? Okay, Cloak and Dagger. Okay, you want to do something because Elektra is now Daredevil, so you want to have her in more books to get that out there. Okay, cool. And what, what are you guys doing with Flash? And it feels like someone did that. And okay, of course, we got to have Conan here. But unlike uh, Jerry Duggan's run, which I felt like started off good and then just kind of meandered, and then they brought Dr. Doom in, and it kind of started to fall apart, even though I love Dr. Doom. And I like Jerry's writing sometimes, but that book lost my interest. And then the Venom symbiote thing they had, they never even did anything with it. So it was yeah. like, it, nothing felt like it built anywhere other than just being like a Conan vehicle. And this is definitely a Conan story, kind of, but it's what you want when Conan's in the Marvel Universe, which is, okay, we don't want to just do Conan in Samaria versus Thula Doom and that. We're going to bring in time-traveling Deathlocks now. And, uh, and we're going to get other members of the Marvel Universe to team up with them. And then they beat the crap out of him, like you said, and he ends up in this cave looking at his reflection and remembering a time where in his past, you know, their future, um, he remembers what he was like in human form. So tell us, man, give us the big reveal. Who is this Deathlock? If it's not Michael, if it's not any of the other guys, who's this version of Deathlock? Well, they don't come right out and tell you exactly. You yeah. see his, he, he says his first name. Yeah. Okay. But, but here's the thing. As soon as he said that, I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> it, and it is. It was Miles Morales. Miles <laughs> Morales, Spider-Man, dude. Yeah. Oh, my God. It was a but cool yeah, twist. It, it just said his first name, and I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and that hit, dude. That that hit. And what's oh funny is, God. and what's funny about that, too, is, like, it's not just, a, again, a gimmicky thing. There, When we get to volume two, there's a, a payoff to that that reveal like yeah, uh yeah. yeah like and we'll get to it when they go into avengers mansion there's a big payoff with it and i was like mm. holy crap but they show miles is kind of past in our future like i said where miles is part of the champions and he was working with uh riri williams who's like you know iron heart in the future and they're older they're like you know in their 30s or whatever and they're still fighting crime and they be form, they form the champions which is really cool oh. and, and they're trying to take down dr doom who opened a portal he opened a portal to um, Annihilus's realm, the negative zone. Yes. And uh, and then said, and so during that big conflict and everything is how Miles became Deathlock, yes. <laughs> which really yes. cool. Yeah. So uh, first of all, I, I have to say this: um, for those that have not read it, mm -hmm. we're talking about Miles. He's not the little teenager. He's not little, some scrawny little. No, guys. He's adult. He's buff. He's big. Yeah, he's like, he's yoked. Yeah. Yo, yeah. man. I yeah. mean, he is like, like, he may be at that point. He may be more Spider Man than Spider Man. <laughs> he looks. Yeah, he's like a. He's like a. He's almost built like Steve Rogers a little bit. Like he's he's a little thicker around the neck and the shoulders yeah. than Spider Man is. But he's, yeah, he's still kind of lean ish, but the way they drew him is like. He has authority. Like he walks in and yeah. he says something, and you're like, "All right, Spider Man," <laughs> you know? Yeah. 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 He he he's tall. He's yeah. buff. Yeah. You know he he's very commanding. Like right. He's a leader. It, he's a leader. Like, in yeah. He is nothing like what we get like right now, like in current time. Ain't right. Nothing like that. Yeah. Nothing. It's a, but that's like that's that's great because like that's the point of doing some of those stories where you go into the future is like you want to see. Because we may never get a story in continuity where we see Miles mature. It's kind of like Spider Man. You know, Peter Parker goes through that all the time where they kind of reset him and his maturity level every freaking couple of years. And it gets annoying. We never get to see the guy really mature for too long. And so it was neat to see a Miles that was the, like a leader of the champions and setting the law, you know, the law down and being like, Hey, this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to take down Doc Ock. I fought him before. I haven't really fought a nihilist before. So I'm going to need Riri and the fantastic four's notes to figure that out, you know? And, and he ends up going into the negative zone and making this big, he, I mean, he almost loses. I mean, he does kind of lose, but he makes a sacrifice play to save, to wait, take out a nihilist and save people and his realm. Um, and in doing so though, condemns himself to a, a life of, 
becoming Deathlock now, you know, and he's like a puppet um, and a time traveling, you know, he's like a victim to time travel. He has to do what the rules say about time travel. And so anyone like Conan who kind of messes with it um, in a, directly or indirectly, he has to go and clean up the timeline. Um, it's almost like he's like a, an assassin for the TVA almost. Uh, uh, that's what yeah. I, I was thinking. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. he has nothing to do with the TVA. It no, is, no, nothing. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. But uh, damn, dude. I mean, they they planned this story out. They they really, God, man. <laughs> yeah. And when they bring that all in, like you have, like I said, you got the big reveal of Miles and the first volume kind of wraps up where Tulsa Doom is coming back and uh, and he's, you know, getting ready to, uh, really set and everything. Uh, Annihilus has been defeated and, and you know, Miles has passed. And then you had a character named uh, Blood Wraith who gets born, you know. Uh, so there's like all these other characters and stuff and cameos they throw in, but they have that big battle and they kind of just wrap all that up at the end of the first volume with another big fight, which is a, an another glorious fight they do really well and pace really well. And then we get, uh, you know, and then what, are you, what are your thoughts on Thulsa Doom? Because I'm, I don't, I like Conan ish, but like, I don't really, I don't know the lore too much. And so some of these villains don't matter to me um, when it comes to Conan. But so I didn't find Thulsa Doom. Like he's very two dimensional. He's like, I just want to resurrect Set. And eh, it wasn't very interesting to me. So I don't know if you felt the same way. Yeah. He, he as a villain was very forgettable. Now, now, now what he did there towards the end of the first volume, mm -hmm. you know, it was pretty big. Like that, yeah. towards the very end there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You were like, whoa. Yeah. Wow. Now here, here's something though. Uh, a lot of people that have not read this book, they're not going to know this, but the rights to Conan reverted back to the original owner, mm -hmm. and he went back to he went to Dynamite Comics, right? And that's 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 the main reason they did what they did. That's so, true. You know, so people that have not read it that are actually that are watching this, listening to this, that that's that's what's happening there, right? Um, Marvel lo lost the license and they had to figure out a way to, you know, send him on. So yeah, that's fair. They, I mean, to be f a fair, a little bit, like I, I don't think Marvel did a lot of great stuff with Conan anyway. Um, they had some interesting books, but none of them that sold well enough to justify the price of the rights probably. So it's, it's a good thing they told their stories, but yeah, this is kind of a send off, I guess in a way. Yeah. 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 Which is, which is cool. Cause I thought it was an effective one. Um, yeah. And it gave me, like I said, what I wanted to see, which was more of Conan knee deep in the Marvel Universe lore. And that's kind of what this book is. Um, because when it ends, like I said, the first volume, you're in the past. It's called Time is the Sharpest Edge. And you're mostly in the past, just bouncing to these different eras of the past. But then at the end, they all land in a new time zone where like they get, you know, they fought Deathlock and they get sucked again through time. And then when they get to the other side, uh, you know, his arm has been ripped off and it's missing and it's stuck in the present. Uh, back when he left, it fell in the the labs of Alchemex when they were fighting him, and uh, and now he's him and the team get sucked to the future, where they get greeted by um, our boy Punisher twenty ninety nine, uh, Jake Gallows, which I'm like I love because they've done they've gone back to the twenty ninety nine universe a few times, and sometimes they they bring Jake back as the Punisher, and other times they do a new Punisher, you know, like a female Punisher or a different guy and everything, and. I'm just like, no, Jake Gallows is the Punisher of 2099, just like Frank Castle is the Punisher of current day. So what did you think of that reveal before we get into issue two with Jake Gallows being there uh, with the Punisher aiming a gun <laughs> like right at everybody? Like, uh, welcome I, to the future. <laughs> I, I thought it was pretty cool. I mean, yeah. uh, the 2099 universe, I, mm -hmm. like, I like pretty well. Of course, my favorite 2099 character is Venom 2099. Of course, uh, yeah. Cromstone. We don't get to see him here, but yeah, not here. Um, but still, yet uh, Punisher twenty nine nine, uh, his character in this series was really good. Um, so, I mean, he's very, very Frank Castle ish for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very, yeah, very great. <laughs> so, right. like, uh, they go into, um, like, they even go into him wearing the the skull symbol on mm -hmm. his chest, just like Frank. Like yep. there's a whole there's a whole story there, and yep. they actually tell it in this in this story arc, which I thought was pretty cool. Yep. So that's true. But yeah, um, so there's like a whole they tell the whole little thing there with him, 
And so you're, you know, they're not just throwing him in and he's just there. Like there's right. actually a story there. Yeah. So. That, yeah. No character is wasted. Like every time we like devil dinosaur, even, and we're going to get some more ca uh, cameos in this one, but there's a purpose. Like I said, it's not, there's not, it's not random that Deathlock is miles. There's it's, it's, not the biggest payoff in the world, but there's still a payoff with him being miles um, when they fight in the final battle. And, uh, and it's cool. I, you know, I, I thought it was awesome. And yeah, seeing you're right. Jake is a lot like, um, is a lot like Frank in a lot of ways. Cause that story is happens all the time. It's a very real story of someone's family getting killed, you know, and, yes. and, and there's a survivor and that survivor wants revenge. It's an easy story to wrap your head around. And I'm sure it's something that happens even in the year 2099. Clearly it does. And, uh, and you had Frank who was like a, a, a you know, Marine in the in, you know, current comic books. And you had Jake who was like working for the, the, the government police. He's like a judge dread type character. Um, and, uh, and his family gets killed by Crom stone, who is the host of venom 2099, uh, and, and son of the stone family legacy that runs Alchemex. So there's a lot of connectivity here in this book as well it's like clearly david did his research um and and had everything play out and yeah you get to relive punisher's origin in this new, in this timeline and it's very similar to the original 2099 uh run so yeah we have this book starts off and the team is basically on the run from the punisher volume two is called escape from nuevo york which is great it's a john carpenter reference but also that's what they call new york in 2099 is nuevo york so the, this book goes back and forth. It starts off with them on the run. Then they try to trap and get the one up on Punisher. Then they got to deal with Deathlock and then they end up at Avengers mansion. So during that kind of like tussle of being on foot mo in, in a world, they again, don't know because most of them haven't been to the 299 universe. What did you think about that opening issue where they're just kind of, it's just nonstop. Like, Oh my God, we're going to get killed. We're going to get killed. Yeah, really? Like they, they, they're legit. Like, Oh, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he, he's gonna kill us <laughs> Jake's relentless. yeah he's coming for them big time yeah so yeah it's back and forth but it's good it's really yeah. good um but, but yeah um when they uh when they end up at the avengers uh mm -hmm. mansion um there is for me something very specific that happens that this i marked out for so big and it's there was actually two things that happened. Okay. And for me, it's a big deal. Um, so I know a lot of people don't take it very seriously, but I'm a big fan of the spider buggy. Oh, I so, know. Great review. So, <laughs> let me tell you what. So they shut. So all of a sudden they pan over and there's the spider buggy. And right. I'm like, yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> And I know a lot of people call it the spider mobile, but yeah. let me just tell you, if you go and you check the Marvel database, yeah, Marvel okay. calls it the spider buggy. Right. So, and I've always called it the spider buggy myself. Yeah. But anyway, what, what was even better for me yeah. is that flash Thompson, agent anti-venom gets mm -hmm. to drive the spider buggy. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Like that's the thing is because flash gets a lot of cool moments in this book. And when that happened, they go to Avengers mansion. And they're like, all right, we are outnumbered at this point. They had, um, I think they were trying to free Dr. Doom of 2099 and they have uh death doc, uh, which is like a death lock Modoc that's chasing them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then, and then you have like, uh, you know, was it Ultron? I think is like the leader of the future or something. And he comes from Miles's Deathlock's severed arm that was found at Alchemex. Right, right. Um, so there's like a lot of things like that is going on, and they have to team up with Doctor Doom, and they're like, "Hey, well, we're in Avengers Mansion, and this place has been destroyed and buried underground, basically through all this rubble. But there's all this tech down here that no one's used for generations. So yeah, Flash is like, dude." dibs on the spider buggy and he takes yeah, off man. that thing and it is so fun that scene oh my god i loved it dude i absolutely <laughs> loved it yeah oh my god yeah but uh, there's something else that he does yeah. that is also within his his i guess realm okay. that uh happens later towards the end of the of the story arc that you're like whoa that's that's a really cool you know and it pays off it's like a payoff yeah oh sure you know? Yeah, so, this, this and, book doesn't skimp on payoffs, that's for sure. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. it's great. It's great. Yeah. yeah, it's one of those where you're like, this is what I want to feel when I read a comic book. I just want to have fun. If I know the lore, 
I get something extra out of it. But if I don't, it's still a fun book. Um, and having all these things, like uh, what I was saying earlier, like they realize or, and, and kind of convince Miles Deathlock to team up with them. And they're like, you know, this is it. This is the end of the world. If, if this Ultron or whatever wins, there ain't nothing left. You know, you're not going to have a time to go to. And then he starts feeling responsible. He's like, well, I'm the one who messed up time now because my arm got severed and I didn't go back and get it. And I have changed 2099 now because of that um, and changed the course direction of Alchemex as a company. And uh, and then so there's a scene where Lila shows up, the hologram from Spider-Man 2099, and she's yep. telling the team and Flash included, like, please, you need to help my friend. You know, he's captured. And they're like, OK, where do we go? And they end up Avengers Tower, uh, Avengers Mansion. But when they get there, um, what I was saying about Miles is there's these scenes where the, the most of the team members um, get get defeated and they get turned into like Ultron hybrids where they actually their original bodies are kept underground in a lab. Um, but they, there's like a, a kind of like a flash clone made of them that is bonded with metallic robot parts, like Ultron parts. And then they're sent to kill. And it's literally just down to like Jake gallows, I think. And, uh, like there's just like two characters. Oh, Deathlock. It's just Jake and Deathlock. So the yeah. whole team we've been hanging out with, they're like, we got a plan. We're going to do this. And then they all get wiped out. <laughs> and Miles has to take his old spider uh, slinger webs from the Peter Parker ones that are in Avengers Mansion and use, he's like, he's like, it's like riding a bike. Like Jake hands him the, the you know, the web shooters. And he's like, it's like, it's like riding a bike, isn't it? And he's just like, and he's like shooting, you know, robots down and just webbing himself. And uh, it's, I'm like, this is so cool. That was like the big payoff was. That's why it's Miles is because he's going to have yeah. this big moment where he's using the web slingers and he's using his powers and he's, uh, you know, saving, making the sacrifice again and saving people. It's awesome. So, um, see, it was actually Flash that got the uh, web shooters. Was and it Flash? That's, yeah. It, that's why it was such a big deal is he's the one he got the web shooters and he's the one that gave them two miles two miles that's, that's right you're right you're right exactly yeah and yeah. that's that's such a big payoff right there dude. it is yeah yeah because he's, mean, he's basically massive. christening he's christening his hero spider-man you know yeah it's it was so he's like he, these were peter parker's now they're yours yeah that's right it was him it wasn't jake it was it was uh it was flash you're right i am sorry i forgot that um so there's something else that happens before they're turned into these like clones, these yeah. death like versions of themselves. Yeah. When they're when they're going to fight um uh oh my gosh. <laughs> Ultron? Ultron. Yeah. So anyway, they're they call him Ultron, but they're also calling him the ultimate deathlock or ultimo deathlock. Yeah, or yeah, like exactly. He's got another name too, yeah. Yeah. So but anyway, something that's happening when they're fighting Ultron. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it was a big deal. Um, like something happens. Uh, I think it was Dagger gets yeah. hurt or something. And Flash it has a thing for Dagger. So right. it kind of pisses him off. And he becomes, a, off. He, he becomes yeah. um, a Grendel. Flash oh, yeah. No, Flash. You're right. Flash gets mad. He sees her get wounded. You're right. Yep. Yeah, he becomes yeah. the big white Grendel dragon. Yes, yes. Yeah. Dude, yeah. I seen that and I was like, yeah. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, that's straight out of King and Black when he got resurrected. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, yep. yeah, you're right about that. That's something right there that a lot of people missed from King and yeah. Black. I, I said this in one of the other videos. Mm -hmm. When he came back to life, mm -hmm. the anti venom symbiote, it also it's alive. It yeah. is sentient. It yeah. talks to Flash. It yeah. gets mad, like the yeah. whole deal. Yeah. So it's you know that's great, dude. But yeah, he becomes a Grendel, dude. And I was like, oh yeah, <laughs> that yeah. was bad. Yeah, oh, it was. Man. You're right. It was cool. Like I said, they give these characters moments, and you're right. It was Flash that passed on the the web shooters, and then Flash gets the big moment where he becomes a dragon, and and uh, and like I said, the team does get defeated though. They're they're captured at one point, and it's just down to Jake and Miles. And Miles is like, all right, I'm going to make the sacrifice play because one of us has to get to this room and set this thing off and stop Ultron or whatever. And Jake's like, yep, and it's not going to be you. And then Doom shows up and Doom's like, it'll be me. So Doom's like, I'm going to, you know, you broke me free. I'm, I'm returning the favor by saving you. So it lets Jake and Miles get away. But then once again, they're overwhelmed and Jake goes, all right, kid, it's all you. And he puts him in that elevator and sends him down. And he's like, take care of it, Deathlock. You know, take care of it, Miles. 
And that's where that's so I think that's where I was thinking of the web shooters. Actually, it was flashed on web shooters and Jake doing this at the end and sending Miles yeah. to the final battle, basically. Yeah. Um, and boy, was it awesome! Like you got Miles, Spider Man, Deathlock, you know, guy, uh, and then you got versus this Ultimo armored Ultron Deathlock <laughs> thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it it is awesome. It is so cool. Um, yeah, and uh, so while while uh miles is is going down yeah. um uh oh gosh uh punisher 299 i keep i uh, forget his name jake uh jake yeah. he sacrifices himself dude yeah. Like he oh, go, yeah he goes guns blazing grenades like the whole deal totally yeah. sacrifices himself yeah so miles, so, so miles can do what he needs to do Oh yeah. yeah, and he, yeah, he and he goes full Punisher. He's just like these things aren't alive. Screw. It. He's got laser guns. He's got bombs, grenades. He's just bam, bam, bam. He's stabbing them with knives. He's just yeah. going like an adam whatever adamantium knife or something. He's just killing these things, yeah, and man. it is wicked. I I'm like any book that would make Punisher just go crazy. Like that's what I loved about War of the Realms. They were Punishers like him and um and uh, Freya, right? Like uh, Thor's mom. Uh, they, yeah. they teamed up and he just, she enhanced his weapons and he's just mowing down goblins <laughs> and ice giants. <laughs> and I'm like, this is the best. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So Absolutely. seeing Jake go, go full Frank castle was, yeah. was so cool. Um, living up to that Punisher name. That's for sure. Um, but then once he does, you know, like I said, he, he lays his life down and the team gets saved though. Miles does the thing. He, he sets off the, the, bomb or whatever it was it shuts down ultron's defenses and then everyone who's been captured all gets freed uh including like the you know the original savage avengers team that we were all you know here with like flash cloak and dagger and everyone and yeah they did do a flash love story kind of love triangle with him and dagger and cloak i didn't personally like it i felt like that was one of the few things in there that felt a little forced um but it does still have some payoffs and it gives cloak a big moment because ultimately in the end cloak uh you know dagger chooses him and the two of them get a big moment at the end. They release all the heroes. Uh, they release Devil Dinosaur, I think, too. They release, he just goes nuts. He opens his jacket or his cloak, and then Spider Man 2099 comes out, Ghost Rider, you know, Doom, everyone's back. And he's yeah, brought them all, all, all of them to fight. All yeah. Of the, yeah. All of the 299 characters yeah. come out, man. Yeah. You see, you see Miguel, like, yeah. Spider Man 20. I'm like, yeah, right there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because when Lila's so, like, Lila, when she sees them, she's like, yeah, I have a friend that's down here. And you're like, okay, she must be talking about Miguel. And then it pays off at the end. Like, again, another payoff from a little tiny scene, you know? And yeah. uh, and so you see Miguel come in and just slash one of the, you know, Ultron bots down. And I'm like, that's so awesome. That's so cool. Yeah. So, so right towards the end there, before yeah. they kill Ultron, yeah. Um, Jake comes back and he, has mm -hmm. been turned into a death lock. Yes, right. You know, but before they take out Ultron, he's mm -hmm. able to he's able to uh overcome it. Right. He overrides the programming yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And he helps them kill Ultron. That's right. But you know, once Ultron's dead, everybody goes back to normal. Right. Which which is a big big thing. Yeah. You know. So um so a huge payoff which you know, I was actually worried. I was like, is this like how Miles is going to be in the future? Yeah. Well, the payoff for it is he actually gets to go back to being himself. Miles, yeah. Miles, Spider-Man. Yeah. Because he, right at the end, a portal opens and, you know, Elektra Daredevil is like, all right, guys, we got to go. This is where we jump back to our timeline, back into Alchemex. And as they're all jumping in, that's when Miles or Deathlock in the future he looks through the portal and he sees the severed arm and he webs it and pulls it back into the future with him. So now that that arm wasn't stuck in the past, that Ultron was never able to exist. And exactly. so, so time refixes itself right in front of him, and it's so wicked to watch. And I'm like, Oh, it's, it's good. It was a, it's a big moment in the book. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I loved it. You're right. And then, like you said, he gets to be miles Spider-Man, which is cool. Really cool. Yeah. So yeah, everybody ends up becoming pretty good friends. Even yep. Cloak and Flash, they get along now. Yeah. And uh, right before the 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 book ends, uh, I can't remember who it was. There's another villain that shows up. Oh, Fing Fang Foom. 
Yeah. And yeah. They're, they're like, you know, so should we take care of this? You know, yeah. and they're like, yeah, let's do this. Yeah. They you just know? got back from the future in the past. They just finished time traveling. They're all tired and exhausted. They haven't slept in a couple of days. And then they look up and Fing Fang Foom's attacking New York. And they're like, well, what do you think? And they're like, eh, I got one more fight in me. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's just like, bye, back to normal, you know? And that's unfortunately where the book in the series ends because, you know, it didn't sell well enough to continue, I guess. But it's, I thought it was a good way to end. It's like, it reminded me of the ending of Justice League Unlimited where they're just kind of like, Superman looks around at all the bad guys and he goes, all right, I'm going to give you a five minute head start or 30 second head start. And yeah. they're like, really? That's it? And he goes, clock's ticking <laughs> and then it's just like yeah okay it's just they save the world but you know the day-to-day -day fighting crime stopping villains that's that's their their forever battle you know the never-ending right. battle so yeah that was cool man and i'm so glad you pushed me to read this because although i liked the first trade certainly more than some of the other savage avenger books i read i wasn't like okay i don't think i'm gonna stick with it right now but i really wish i did i wish i supported it more because that last trade especially for as a 2099 fan too um, it's it won me over, and there was cool flash moments, cool cloak and dagger moments. Even Weapon H had some cool moments, and Black Knight had a big scene in this as well. Like Dude, <laughs> I, I, I so, he, yeah. he becomes uh when he gets the blood race, he gets he blood, becomes he becomes blood, blood race. race. Yeah, right. Yeah, like he's <laughs> yeah. a he's a badass dude. He is. Yeah, he goes full Hulk I mean, mode. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh man. And then another thing, Weapon H. Yeah. Something I like that they didn't do throughout yeah. anything else he was in. Yeah. The way that he looked. Yes. He he was a cross between Gray Hulk, yes. Joe Fix It, mm -hmm. and Wolverine. That's he right. Had the, he had the lamb chops, the, yeah. the, the yeah. thigh burns. Yeah. He had oh, the yeah. whole deal. Yeah. yeah. And there's and there's one right. point in the book where he changes into a different color too. Um he, beca he becomes a harpy. Yeah, that's right. A harpy. Yeah, that's right. It's yeah. cool. Yeah. It's uh I uh, there's just so much in this book that I'm like, I can't believe you made me like these characters that I, I didn't really care for before and you had fun with them, but you also told a story that was like, it made sense. It was these characters and that you're, cause every time you do a story like this, you're like, where are the other Avengers? Where's Kang? Where, you know, why aren't they part of this? And this kind of answers all that like indirectly in some ways, but it, it kind of just fits as a, a self-contained 10 issue story. Um, yeah. And it's, it's wicked, man. And I'm glad you pushed me to read it. And I'm glad you're here today taking time out of your, of your, uh, you know, vacation or your, your Christmas, you know, stay and stuff. I'm glad you're taking time to talk to me about this because this is a fun book. And I, and I encourage, and I'm sure you would too, everyone out there to go pick up these two volumes. I'm telling you right now, if you, if you just, if you just get the trade paper bags, the graphic novels yeah, and you read it from beginning to end, bo both, both, mm -hmm. you're going to love it, dude. I mean, it, it is a great story. Like, yeah. like they, they did so well, man. And all the characters, I mean, even the cameos, dude. Yeah. Oh my God. There's a lot. There's a lot of cameos. It yeah. was really good. It's really good. So yeah, if you're a Doom fan, there's stuff in here for you. If you're a Dane Whitman, Black Knight fan, there's stuff in here for you. I mean, there's cool cloak and dagger stuff. And there's definitely some cool Flash Tom, Thomas uh, Thompson moments that we talked about, obviously. So yeah, man. So wrap it up. What are your final thoughts? If you had to rate this book out of 10, uh, I feel like I know what you might say, but what would you rate it out of 10? <laughs> <out of> <laughs> well, if we hadn't got some of the uh, cameos mm -hmm. and we had, especially like the, the spider buggy, yeah, uh, the deal with with Miles and the web shooters. Mm -hmm. I probably would have gave it a nine. Okay, but with that stuff added in, it gets a ten for me. <laughs> you know, this is one of those things where I know if I if I gave it a nine, people would go like, "Ah, oh, that's so seek. Like nothing can be perfect or whatever." But like, and that's not true. I think books and movies can be as perfect as they resonate with you. And and this book, even though I had criticisms of the Flash and uh, Dagger stuff that I didn't like, even though I had criticisms of some of the pacing a little bit in the first volume everything pays off so well that I, that it washes all that away. So yeah. I have to also give it a 10. This book is just fun. And, uh, and it's a good popcorn flick while also being a cool, uh, lore focused character driven piece and, and gr with great action. It's, it's really wild how many bases this thing covers. Um, and so for that, it's like a four quadrant book almost in a lot of ways. Uh, it's very violent though. So I would say, you know, maybe certain ages shouldn't read it, but uh, if you're like yeah, 13 yeah. and up, I think you'll love it. It. <laughs> it did. It did on the covers. It did say parental visor. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's 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 gets intense. I mean, yeah, you see like heads split open and a couple other things. So, uh, yeah. but it's it's um, cool. So uh, pretty much 
I'm going to explain how it kind of, how it kind of reads. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Go ahead. It, it it's like you're reading a movie, literally. Yeah. Like a screenplay. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, it, it, it it's that good. It's that good, and it's and it's a story arc that you, that you can read multiple times and get into it. Yeah, because you'll find you'll find new things. Like I said, I've read this probably three times this year because there was a couple times we were going to record this, so I was trying to prep. And this last time, I took notes, and there was things I noticed this time that I didn't notice the first two times. And I was like, "Wow, there's some good stuff." And then obviously, my memory is so jarred that I forgot a couple moments. But that's why I wanted you know our friend Venom Balor here uh, because like. That's why I wanted you here because you help me balance what I do and don't remember very well. And, uh, and I'm glad because those flash moments that you mentioned that corrected me on were some of the best moments in the book. And I can't believe I, my, like my memory of it got twisted around, but very cool stuff. So yeah, please guys like go pick up Savage Avengers. This, I gotta say, and I've talked about this before, if they do another Savage Avengers book, now that they don't have Conan, the next Savage Avengers book needs to take place in the Savage Land. It needs to have Kazar on the team and uh, and have some Marvel characters like Kane or something. Like you need to throw some people on the Savage Land who have never been there before and just go nuts for like this for like 10 yes. issues. Yes. <laughs> it would be uh, so fun. So fun. Dude, all the characters that was in this, I mean, it, it, it fits so well, man. Yeah. Um, and they used every character perfectly. I, yeah. I mean, it, it, <laughs> it's yeah. great. It's like I great. said, it, it makes it gets kind of because you go, oh, it's just a, another cameo, another cameo. But then there's a purpose and you're like, OK, so it's not just a cameo. Like there's a reason uh, for this to be here. And that's hard to do. I got we always talk about things that are hard in writing and comics and stuff. And that's hard to do to do to do that much, now, you know. To some of you, will the book be that perfect? Probably not. You know, everyone's going to have different tastes. But for us, as lore fans, as fans of these characters, and as fans of, not fans of some of these characters, this book kind of delivered on all fronts for me, at least, and for you, clearly, it sounds like. So, yeah, please, like I can't say it enough. Go pick up this book uh, right now. Um, I'll put links to the Amazon trades uh, down below underneath Venom Balor's Twitter account. So you know, click him, follow him, and then go pick up these books on Amazon if you'd like. Um, um. Yeah, also, uh, anybody that's like a, a fan of Devil Dinosaur, he made yeah. cameos. He made cameos in this story, but he made multiple cameos. It wasn't just a one-off. And also, yeah. if you paid attention, the last time that you see him, yeah, he it's him actually. That's when he goes Zaps into to the present. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I was like, I was like, oh, are we going to talk about that? But you're right. It is a. Uh, he, the last yeah. time you see him in the book, he zaps to the moment before he meets yes. Moon Girl. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, how, how perfect is that, dude? It's so, oh, it's so clean. Whole, yeah. Through the whole story, dude. I mean, like every little cameo, every little thing pays off. Yeah. Yeah. So, and like I said, if I you're mean, a fan of the bigger Marvel Universe, there's things in there that you're going to go, I wonder if that's the moment he went and met Moon Girl. And then you go pick up Moon Girl number one. You're like, oh my God, that's the setting that they met in. Like, holy cow. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So Venom Balor, thank you so much uh, for being here. Venom Unleashed, you know, Venom Balor at Venom Balor on Twitter. Put a link down below for you guys so you can go follow him. Uh, any last thoughts before we wrap this up, man? Um, I am looking forward to the next time we do this. Heck yeah. um, I've, I've got a feeling it's going to be Ben, ben and Kane. <laughs> <laughs> it sure is, man. Yeah, Chasm and Kane. Uh, Chasm, the curse of Kane. Uh, am I my brother's keeper? Such a cool phrase. Um, because Kane, ever oh. since Ben came back as the Jackal, Kane has basically been on a mission to kill him. And so now that Chasm is, has no memories and he's kind of like this you know, wounded animal that probably should be put down at some point, I'm wondering if that's the story they're going to tell. So, or if the chasm abilities are going to get passed to Kane. I hope that's not the case, but um, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. But when that book finishes, you and I will come on here and we will do a full one of these, or maybe if we, if we can plan it out well enough, maybe we'll do one of these for each issue. You know? Oh, that'd be great. Dude. Okay. Maybe that'd we'll do something like that. Yeah. Cool. I'm down I, for I that. Got a, I've got a feeling that this, that this, this story yeah. is going to hit. I hope so. I mean, I again, when I saw that announced literally an hour before you and I recorded this, I'm like, okay, that's that's fate saying like, hey, this book is for guys like you and people like you. So, yeah, we got to talk about it because we got to find more Ben and Kane fans out there. So, uh, yeah. so I think we'll do it. We'll do every issue. So, for those of you out there who are wondering, the book comes out I think in June or July. 
So once they start coming out, I'll have Venom Unleashed back on, and he and I will review and discuss each issue in full spoilers and everything, just like we did today. Yeah, that I think that it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. Sweet. Awesome, man. Summer with the symbiotes again, me and you. Uh, and, oh, we'll, yeah. we'll, and we'll reach out to Eddie, too, um, and we'll see if Eddie's around and if there's something else we can still try to make that happen where it's the three of us on. Uh, we'll, we'll try to work that out, too, at some point. Yeah, he's he's been pretty busy. Um, I know. I don't like to bother the guy. I know he's going. He's got a lot going on. So, yeah. um, but if you're out there, Eddie, we love you. We miss you. You know, Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to all of you guys because we're recording this the day after Christmas. So, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year's, and uh, and thank you again, Venom Unleashed, for being here today, man. It meant a lot to me. Oh yes, absolutely, my pleasure. Absolutely love this. Awesome, and thank you guys for watching. Remember to like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and we'll see you in the future. Peace.